Hey there, welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph and I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to progressive rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and other forms of rock music. Today we're doing episode 16 of Rock Stars Who Thrilled Us But Have Since Passed On. So today we have two um, fairly notable people. I, at least one of them will be well known and that one will be Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols. The other one is John Glasscock, who played bass for Jethro Tull. Okay, so we'll be doing Sid Vicious first, but before I go on, I just wanted to make a note that um, from this point on, because it's starting to get more and more people, um, that um, I'm going to do some kind of honorable mentions, mentioning people that I'm not going to do because I can only do a couple people or you know, at the most, maybe three. And uh, I don't want to miss anybody. I, I did miss a person last night, and I beg forgiveness for that. Um, should have at least mentioned them. And anyways, at the beginning now, that was the warning shot. So from now on, there'll be some honorable mentions. I don't want to shortchange anybody. I don't really want to shortchange anybody at all. But, you know, there's some that mean more to me than others. Okay, so tonight we're doing... Um, Legendary punk rocker and crazy man, Sid Vicious. Uh, bass player for the Sex Pistols. Uh, died very young at 21. Anyways, I'll give you the vitals about Sid first. Um, he was born Sid Vicious. Uh, he wasn't actually born Sid Vicious. He was born Simon John Ritchie. Um, his mother and his her mother's boyfriend um, had a child... That they met and got together. Uh, they born. He was born May the tenth, nineteen fifty-seven, in London, England, and he died February the second, nineteen seventy-nine, at the age of twenty-one in New York City, USA. Um, his music was, of course, punk rock. His instrument was bass. Apparently, he played the drums too. I hope he played them better than he played the bass. Um, and he did vocals as well. He did sing some tracks here and there. Um, years active 1976 to 1979 um, so what can I say his mother was a bit of a drug addict very bad heroin addiction um, she did marry another gentleman who went by the name of John Beverly but he died shortly after they met uh, shortly after they were married um, so he, uh, him, him and his mother moved in 1971 to the city of Stoke Newington. He attended Stoke Newington School and started using the name John Beverly as his name. His, his mother had, like I said, his mother had a heroin addiction and she kicked him out when he was 16. He uh, told the counselor at that time or around that same time period that he had been thinking about suicide. So this isn't something that was new to him, you know. Um, there is the cat story. Apparently, Sid Vicious had a perplexity for torturing cats. This is not something that would fly too well with my better half. But, um, you know, it is his story. I mean, the, he was a problem child from the get-go, obviously, uh, but gained some notoriety, you know. He started playing with a group of guys called the Four Johns. Um, he met John Lydon in school, and he by this time was going by John Beverly. And John Lydon introduced him to John Gray and John Wardle, and they formed the band called the Four Johns. In 1977, he met Nancy, and they had uh, what we call a tumultuous love affair. At say the least. Apparently he beat her at times and inflicted damage on her. And uh, But she also had problems as well. She had an addiction issue as well. Um, there was a concert in which he carved. This is just, I'm just going to tell a few stories about him. Just so you get a real good idea of what this guy was like. So anyways, he carved, um, give me... A fix on his chest with razor blades for one of the concerts. Uh, not a stable individual. 
Okay, so anyways, I'm just going to flip my chart over because I have a few more notes on him. He changed, um, anyways, he was charged with murdering his girlfriend, Nancy. They found her with a knife in her side. Um, lots of stories about this. Uh, many of them you've heard. Apparently, he ha it was his knife, and apparently he first said that he killed her, and then he said that he couldn't remember, and then he later said that he didn't kill her. So it was one of those three. Um, anyways, they charged him with the murder. Um, there were some stories that they, um, she had lots of money and stuff on her, and somebody else took his knife and stabbed her with it to take the stuff. Um, you know, they had lots of people in and out, and I can imagine the type of people coming in and out weren't um, high on the morality scale. At any rate, um, she died, and he was interned, and then he was... Um, he was released on bail for 50 grand. Um, McLaren announced one of the, I think he was the band manager, McLaren, announced a Christmas album to be uh, fin to finance Sid's court case. And the shirt that said, only they could do this, I'm alive, she's dead, I'm yours. Go figure, eh? Anyways, uh, he did do, he was notorious for fighting with people. He broke a bottle one time uh, in, a, in a, a scuffle with a guy and stabbed him in the face with it. So, I mean, he wasn't a non-violent individual and had a huge drug problem. And he was actually kicked out of the band because he was uncontrollable. And I'm not even sure why he was in the band in the first place since I'm not sure that he actually played bass. I just think he owned one. Um, but to play the Sex Pistols music, you really didn't need to be able to play too well either. But I will say this about the Sex Pistols album, never mind the Bullocks, it's one of the very best of its genre. Um, they may not have been the first punk band, but they certainly were one of the biggest and most influential. And he was a big part of that. Um, apparently, before he joined the band, people considered him to have a good sense of humor. And once he joined the band, he became somewhat miserable, I guess. Anyways, in I'm going to kind of wind this up a bit. Um, you know, he still gets still gets an estimated 400000 a year in royalties. Uh, for what? I'm not really sure. But this may be a bit of a, a different type of, uh, you know, uh, giving love to a great... The only thing about Sid Vicious I can absolutely say is that he was part of a uh, a band that had a huge impact and huge, huge influence in their genre. And are still it still ripples from today. Like It's still thought of as one of the top uh, punk albums of all time. And it had a big influence on me when I was younger. I, I really liked punk music quite a bit for a while there. I think it came in the early 80s with me, 80s through to about... 83, 84, I was listening to a lot of punk rock, and this was one of the albums, and this was one of the bands. So anyways, uh, Sid Vicious died on February the 1st, 1979, of a drug overdose. Sorry, not a big surprise there. Uh, you know, 21 is young to die, and, you know, his life was a train wreck, you know, this is what drugs and bad parenting will do. However, I can say that, you know, like I said before, Sid Vicious did help start and was one of the biggest influential punk artists of his time period. So uh, there's my Sid Vicious thing. Um, now we're going to move on to number two. Just got to get my notes up for that and we're going to do a band a, 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 a guy who also had some issues with his health and drug issues as well but um, I quite like this guy quite a bit uh, John Glasscock he was a member of a band I quite love actually and he was a member of the band during my favorite album which is Songs from the Woods so he played on my favorite album by them so, uh, anyways, he was born May the 2nd, 1951 in Islington, England, and he died November the 17th, 1929 at the age of 28 in London, England. 
Uh, the music he played in was rock, blues rock, progressive rock, folk, fusion, and he actually did some flamingo as well. Um, and he was a bass guitar player primarily, uh, also playing bass pedals and synthesizers. He did actually do some singing, not on the Jethro Tull album. He was a har harmony vocal, uh, backing vocalist on that album, on their albums. But he did do some, he's been on about seven or eight albums from different bands before he was even in Tull. So he was, he was well-traveled and a, a pretty good bass player, I think. Uh, he was active from 1962 to 1979. Okay, so um, a little bit about his history. He started out playing in a band called The Gods together with uh, uh, Uriah Heep uh, members. They weren't Uriah Heep at the time, but they went on to uh, fo help form Uriah Heep, and that was Ken Hensley and Lee Kerslake two very notable musicians, I think. So he played with some good people right from the start. After uh, after that, he joined Head Machine and, um, and then joined uh, to Tofar, Tofat, a game with uh, Hensley and Kerslake. Um, so what else can we tell you about him? Um, he replaced um, Jeffrey Hammond, who was a good friend of Ian Anderson's and he made while he was in the band he made a good he became a good friend of Barry Moore Barlow who was the drummer at the time um uh, just looking at my notes for yeah so those are the main things he did um so what happened was that he suffered from some health issues related to his heart and was told that he had to change his lifestyle or you know could have a heart attack or he could die of heart failure right but he didn't and this led to Ian Ian Anderson uh, you know dismissing him from the band because he wasn't taking care of himself and he didn't want that in the band so he rep he was replaced by David Pegg who uh, played for Jethro Tull after that for a while um, so um, when he died, he died broke. He had no money, and, and a lot of this was because of his drug problems and stuff, but also uh, he didn't have a very good financial deal with um, Jethro Tull. This was stated later by Barry, Barry, uh, Barry Moore Barlow, who wasn't really keen on what the thing, and he and uh, Barlow ended up playing for, um, paying for his... Uh, funeral because he had no money you know and this led Barlow to because of uh, the situation that uh, Jethro Tull had financed him not very well he decided to leave the band or that was one of the reasons why he decided to leave the band which is unfortunate because that period of time um, when he was playing with the group from 76 to 79 they released uh, a lot of good albums, including, of course, my favorite one, Songs from the Wood, and Barry Bar Barry Moore Barlow was a main part of that band, and when uh, he left, uh, the band changed and became something different. Although they're, they were still good, I just, that's my favorite period. Um, anyways, so there you have it. Uh, John Glasscock, um, I did, I, oh yeah, there was one other thing um, he did when he played with uh, Tofat, he, uh, his brother Brian also played in that band as well, so he did have a, a brother who played music as well. So I, I think he's a pretty pretty solid bass player. Um, I, I like the stuff that he does on um, Songs from the Wood, and he was also, I don't have the two albums, that the one that precedes and the one after. Um, a tool for rock and roll, Too Young to Die, and the one that comes after Songs from the Wood. I don't have that one either. But um, I love this album a lot. And, and the only reason I don't have those albums is because I've been looking for them and I haven't been able to find them yet. So I guess I could order them online, but, you know, budgetary restraints are also in effect. <laughs> 
Anyway, so there you have it. Uh, John Glasscock of Jethro Tull fame and Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols and the Punk Movement. The other two, there's a couple of other people I wanted to mention here too. Mike Patty of the um, Spooky Tooth. Just wanted to make sure that I mentioned him because I think he's pretty cool as well. And uh, of course, uh, uh, oh, I, gotta, I can't see his name. See, I have a bad combination of not being able to see and not being able to write. Bad combo. <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Uh, uh, Percy. Was it Percy? No, I, I don't think that was his name. Dorsey. That's who I'm thinking of. See, I can't even read my own writing. Dorsey Burnett also died this year. He's the brother of Johnny Burnett, who was on one of my early episodes of uh, this series. So I wanted to give them some attention too. And I just wanted to also say that last night was the night um, was was the night that I should have started uh, giving some honorable mentions, but um, I hadn't been doing it up till then and wasn't quite ready yet. So um, so I just want to say that from this point forward, I'll try to give some honorable mentions because obviously I can't do everybody there was one year i think there was like eight people i wanted to do and i can't do eight people so i decided for that year to do four people but to split it into two episodes but i don't want to do that too often because it takes up a lot of time uh tomorrow night we'll be doing three people this will be the first time i've deviated from the uh deviated from the uh program which has me doing two people I deviated tomorrow night because there's two stars that I really love a lot and I was definitely going to do them but I couldn't leave the third guy off because it would just be impossible to leave him off he's too iconic too influential too big of a name and you know and you probably already guessed that I'm talking about John Lennon um, the other two guys John Bonham and Bon Scott are among my favorite musicians, so I was automatically going to be doing them, but I can't leave John Lennon out in good conscience. He's just too impactful, you know. He may not be one of my favorites of all time, but he certainly is recognizable as one of the greatest musicians and songwriters of all time. So those are the ones we're going to be doing tomorrow night as we start the 1980s and say goodbye to the 1970s tonight. So there we are, 16 episodes gone, plenty more to go. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed doing it. And I hope you will tune in, um, actually not tomorrow, but uh, Thursday for episode 17 featuring Bon Scott, John Bonham, John Lennon, a threesome. It'll be a fairly lengthy video, I think. There's a lot to talk about with those three. Anyways, I hope you, uh, like I said, I hope you enjoy this. So like and subscribe. And uh, I hope you have a good day, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. And uh, this is Prog Monster signing off. Have a good day. Bye.